Ladies and gentlemen, hello, hello, and welcome to a very special episode of Sherm in the Booth. Boo, boo. My name is Sherm. You guys are some true Chicagoans for coming out in January. It's snowing outside, it's freezing, and you're at the fucking club at 1 a.m. Boys with the bass, yeah, boys, boys, bass. Who am I talking to right now? You're famous. <laughs> free food, free drinks, music. Girls, let's go. go! Do you like it? Cool. If you don't, goodbye. <laughs> I'm missing the most important part. Oh, huh? We should throw like a crazy like bar mitzvah party. This, this is crazy. Send me stems. I finished <laughs> it. Hey, what's up, guys? How's everyone doing? Just wait, you know it kicks in like three to five seconds afterward. <laughs> <clears throat> Yo, yo, what's up, everyone, and welcome back to another brand new episode of Sherman the Booth. I'm, of course, your host, Sherman. Today is Wednesday, May 18th, 2022, and this is episode 206. I hope everyone is having an amazing start to their summer. Now, today's episode is very special because we've got a true pioneer in dance music, the creator of Grunge House himself, Saint Punk, and he came to Chicago to co-headline a new event series called Flanino's Fun House that will feature bass house artists from all over. Flynn, Saint Punk, and I sat down together and had an amazing conversation filled with great stories, pieces of advice, and of course, a ton of laughs. In episode 206, we got it all in and started by talking about his journey into dance music. Now, Trevor was born and raised in Southern California and always had a passion for music. He was actually lead singer in a punk band and was killing it, but it wasn't meant to be. He found himself making electronic music. With grunge rock at his core, he found ways to fuse genres together and is now known for his unique remixes and originals and, of course, his energetic live sets. We had a great conversation on the St. Punk discography, and it's filled with an incredible catalog of bootlegs, remixes, and originals that all have their own level of energy to them. Whether it's a bootleg of his favorite rock anthems like Nirvana's Smells Like Teen Spirit, or his official remix of Weathen's All In My Head, you know it's St. Punk right away. We also went deep on his recent album, which is called Ouroboros, and talked through the inspirations and story behind tracks like Comatose and Gloves. Incredible. Also love the conversation we had on the state of Bass House. St. Punk and Fellino are both very passionate about the Bass House scene and of course the culture that thrives within it. Although it's a well-known and respected genre, it's certainly taken a back seat with the recent commercialization of Tech House and House. We discuss why it's so important to stay true and always consider the long-term play in your career. Don't chase trends and your fans will ride with you till the end. Love this portion of the interview. St. Punk is truly a special artist. He lives and breathes music and is such a good guy even though he makes some hard music. He is an innovator and inspires so many artists like Flanino to follow their passion and have fun with it. I was so glad we got to do this in person and hang out. Cannot wait to see you guys again soon. Now let's get into it right now so you guys can hear a story for yourselves. This is episode 206 with St. Punk. Ladies and gentlemen, hello, hello, and welcome to Sherm outside of the booth. Yo, yo. Sherm on the couch. Oh, on the couch. We got a special Wait, episode where's today. Your, where's your booth? Is it usually like... It's usually right, right there. there. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like, you know those cards that when they open, like they appear, you know, like a 3D stuff? Mm-hmm. That's like my apartment. Okay. Like, right now, the card is currently closed. Yeah, but I like this vibe. <laughs> yeah, this is a good like... vibe. I moved my fake plant over here <laughs> next to me. Can you it see seemed, it? It seemed very natural. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. I thought it was supposed to. Thank you. My director (laughs) says I'm doing great. Great opening so far. (laughs) This is episode 206, I think. So It's crazy, but we're here with St. Funk It Punk, baby! Woo! Yeah, thank you, guys. We have an audience here. We We do have an audience in the crowd. Yeah, see, I love it. I absolutely (laughs) love it, bro. I gotta tell you, first and foremost, the second you came on last night, I was just like, this guy's a fucking headliner. (laughs) <laughs> like, I mean, thank you. bro, yeah. you killed it, man, and Flynn has been talking about you for years, and it's it my baby boy. It's amazing, bro, to have you here with us, <laughs> and uh, that's one of my favorite parts about the music industry, is like, to a certain extent, everyone is reachable, and for I feel sure. like you've been a mentor for Flynn, Definitely. and I want to say thank you as like someone who's been a part of Flynn's growth and brand, and... Yeah, man, you just, you deserve yeah, it. I mean, yeah, I appreciate it, man. Thank I mean, you. I appreciate yeah. him. Like, he's the one who brought me out here, really, like... And he's the one who hit me up originally, and mm-hmm. it was just like, yo, do I, do I fuck 
with your shit and like yeah I was, I was like I, I want to do this kind of thing and I was all about it so yeah Flanino's fun house man this has been in the works for so long yeah how do you feel Flynn I mean you must yeah, have a little bit of sigh of relief yeah, when did you like, want to like, like start this whole thing oh, fuck. when did Tony start pushing it <clears throat> three years ago. Three years ago. What? Three years ago. Well, it was right Tony, before the pandemic. Yeah, right before oh, the pandemic. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My other manager, Tony, who you met, um, he brought it up, and then when the space became available, because I actually toured Fame yeah. before um, before COVID happened, and then it just worked out. I mean, like luckily, like you were like I told I told you. Mm. <clears throat> I was, the first thing I said was, whenever I have a show, I'm going to bring you out. Yes. Um, the man of his word. And so, true, true. And so yeah, it's so like to launch the fun house and everything, and like you know, really have that. A lot of people came, and I'm just really glad it went as smoothly as it did, and everyone crushed it. And dude, for a first time, it was pretty. It was pretty legit. Yeah. I yeah. dude, I was really taken back. Like the crowd, they came, they stayed, they were all about it. I mean, yeah. did you guys have fun? Woo! Yeah. <laughs> we got a few blown out eardrums here. But, uh, oh my god. What do you expect at a base house show at the club? <laughs> Dude, my ears. <laughs> oh, you know your girl had fucking uh, paper in her ears? No, <laughs> what? I put, I put it. Because I put it in her ears. Because I was like, hey, listen, like, my ears are burning. You need to put something in these ears. Yeah. I went to the bathroom and got some, some, uh, some like, paper towels. And Smart. Yeah, yeah. That's why you said you were in the band, so it was just like... Yeah. You know, I, I forgot my earplugs, of course, so... Yeah, gotta yeah. do what you gotta do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. wow. Well, gotta go old school. I thought it went really well last night. Yeah, it was yeah. awesome. It was super fun. It was, it was so loving. cool. I had actually... I'd only been to that club blacked out, so I called the first time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was... That, just, but that's how you go to clubs. That's, yeah. That's how you experience. I mean, I've had some days, but... <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah. so fucking sick, like... Yeah. And, when Flynn was on and there was no one behind, it was like, you know, the lighting was incredible. Dude, the lighting was, is pretty sick in that place. It was ben. awesome. Shout out to Ben. Shout out to Ben. That was like, awesome. Yeah. Shout out to Tim. But when you got on, it turned into like a boiler room. Dude. Yeah. Like, there were yeah, people yeah. behind you and I was like, wow. Like, yeah, I kind of love the vibe of like being so close around the booth. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. everyone just kind of hangs out. Yeah. Kind of dope. Yeah. Was that your first time playing in Chicago? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Let's yeah. go! Yeah. I told you, bro! Oh, I told you! you Let's man. go, man. Yeah, yeah. The base house scene here is so real, and that's something I really want yeah, to I mean, deep with you on. Yeah, too. interesting. Like, it did seem like last night people were like actually into the base house thing. Yeah. yeah. More so, because obviously tech house has been such a thing right now. So. Especially in Chicago, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. totally. So, like, but it seemed like kids were into it. Yeah, well, that's the one thing that we've tried to, like, push Flynn to do is, like, really own like, the music that you love to produce, mm-hmm. you know? Like, your Smells Like Teen Spirit remix, like, he's been playing that for... Since the day Dude, the out, very right? first... He, the, he picked me up in the airport, and he had it on... Blast of course he did! Of course he did! <laughs> Just so they would know that it was me pulling up, and he's like, he's like, oh, I know that guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, that... Wait, is that the song? <laughs> you should play a little louder. I played that, I played that out the very... I remember I played that out for my very first big show in Chicago, Valentino Khan. Mm-hmm. And, like, I was afraid because I was the opener, and, like, Isaiah was like, don't play too hard. And yeah, I played that, and it. it ripped the room open. <laughs> well, you're going to have to experience this one for yourself. This is the St. Punk remix of Nirvana's Smells Like Teen Spirit. Load up on guns, bring your friends, fun to lose, and to pretend. She's all the one, the self pretty much like bass house but like I wasn't doing it's kind of like a blend of Max and I we used to DJ Prism we used yeah. to call it like Prism Bass House which is basically like Future House and like yeah. mm. that like festival-y type shit but um <clears throat> more mashup edit type well stuff. that's because like as yeah, an yeah. opener here like you're not you weren't treated like an artist 
Yeah, yeah. You know, I wasn't really an artist at the time. I mean, I just was starting, I think, to yeah. be an artist. Um, I really discovered my sound. But yeah, like once I played that, because I played like Tech House, Bass House, Feature House. Um, but once I played that song, I ripped it. I mean, yeah. it can be really hard, like, Oops. for any of Because Flynn is legitimately one of the best open format DJs in Chicago. Thank like, you. that's a fact. Like, he's held residencies. He's open for so many different people. Yeah. This guy crushes sets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, nobody right. else. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, we all know, everybody in this room and everybody watching this knows how great of a producer he is. Yeah, yeah, for and, sure. And, Trevor, my question to you is, like, you were in bands back in the day, right? Yeah, yeah. You probably, I mean, I don't want to say you had to take the long way to success, because you love what you're doing and you've gotten to where you're at now. Sure, yeah. But Flynn, I feel like it's come to this crossroads where it's like, all right, like my main source of income is DJing, but mm-hmm. I want to be a bass house producer. I want to be a touring DJ where I play my music. Yeah, did sure, you have yeah. a moment like that? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, of course I did. Uh, I was, I was, I kind of went through, um, through crossroads for sure. I, I stopped, I, I quit my job to tour with the band, like mm-hmm. full time, do that, try and make it work. It, you know, kind of fizzled out. There were six members in the band. We all wow. kind of wanted something, something else. Yeah. Um, eventually, it kind of fizzled out, which is, you know, shit happens. It's fine. Yeah. Then I kind of wanted to start my own thing. But then I, you know, I, I couldn't just do it right off the bat, so then I had to get a job again, you know? And yeah. Then, and then I was just like, fuck, man, I just, I want to, like, do music more. Mm-hmm. So then finally I got this, this uh, sync deal where I was, like, making, like, sync music. Awesome. Yeah. And then so that allowed me to actually quit music. Or sorry, quit my my day job. Yeah, and I didn't have to do the DJ thing in that sense. Yeah, because I was able to kind of do music with like through another outlet, mm-hmm. um, and that gave me the time to really focus on my project and yeah, do that kind of thing. But I mean, yeah, like you know, it's it's kind of all over the place. You just kind of have to hustle like whatever it is. Yeah, it's, it's DJing like you just yeah, you got to find the time. It's it's tough, especially yeah. like with bass house too, right? Like. It's one of those things where it's just, it's a it's a niche genre still, to a certain extent. Right? <clears throat> now it is, yeah, we were talking about this. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it used is, to be. It is. It didn't used to I, be. I, I don't know. I don't know. Jaws, yeah. What's that Rock the Party track, right? Uh, rock the Party, you rock the party. That was like, in, in my eyes, right? It probably wasn't the first true yeah, what, song. Honestly, yeah, I think Jaws was kind Jaws of the one who kind of started house. Yeah. the bass yeah. house vibe, yeah. the movement, and so, and, I, you know, maybe, you know, maybe you can make the argument and say, like, you know, it's it's passe, it's past its prime now. Yeah. Jaws is, even Jaws is kind of moving on to do, like, more tech house and stuff. Literally. Literally. I, I think everybody's house, kind of chasing trends right now, and, like, yeah, that's that's cool. I feel like you kind of have to do that to stay somewhat relevant. Um, but at the same time, like, if you're, if you're not feeling it, then, like, don't do it. Mm-hmm. Because there's always, there's how many billions of people in the world, there's going to be a, a niche market for you. Yeah. Yep. Maybe it's niche, but it's a market and if you love it, fuck it. Totally. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> totally. And and that's the thing too is like there is a period of time where like, you know, Flynn's a big open format DJ, right? That yeah. means he's playing a lot of different music that a lot of people can like. Yeah. Now he's making music like you for himself and is enjoying the process, but now it feels like, oh, there's a smaller audience for me. For yeah. sure, for sure. I, it it is kind of hard like I when you know when I've made like my my Nine Inch Nails remix or yeah. like yeah. uh Rage Against the Machine remix. Yeah. Like I wanna see a fucking like pit and shit going yeah, yeah, exactly. bro. Yeah. But like but like <laughs> do you like shuffling kids wanna see that? No, no, no there's not like shuffling kids. So it's like I feel like I'm at this like weird in between where it's just like Shuffler's about to get Is it too hard for kid. people? Right. Is it too soft for some people that like it hard? And right, I, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just kinda like, well, I don't know. I, I like it. <laughs> yeah. It's so true. And yeah. that's where, like, that 100 fans mantra comes in, right? Like, I would way rather have 100 people that are dedicated to me and love my music than a million <clears throat> fans who like my photo and, and scroll past, right? Totally. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I feel like so so much of the, of the sound now, like, it could be anyone. I could put on a track from, I, mean, I don't want to name any names, but, you know, you could put on five different artists, yeah. and I don't know if I would be able to tell the difference. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. it's like it's it it's, sucks. It's and frustrating. Like, and there are artists who do can who can set themselves apart mm-hmm. you know, and play in that in that space. But yeah. I feel like you know, like I said, everyone's chasing the trend. And once you start doing that, you just get behind. I you know I, I think you really are a pioneer though of what you call grunge house. Definitely. <laughs> and, and when I say grunge house, right, like a lot of things come to mind. And for someone that maybe hasn't listened to your music, how would you define grunge house? Um, it uh, I don't know. I, I guess it's um, it's it's kind of bass housey, 
But I would say it's got more of a wild rawness to it. Okay. It's kind of like... Rock elements. Yeah. I mean, sure. yeah, there are, like, for sure, I, like, I do love, love rock elements. Like clipping, yeah, yeah, literally clipping. <laughs> <laughs> clipping the master. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, you know, I like to use guitar sometimes. I like to remix rock stuff, mm-hmm. which I think lends itself to that sound. Right. Um, but I, I like to use, like, big bombastic drum fills and you know when I think of a drum fill I go to like acoustic drums mm-hmm. um, I, I like to use weird sounds something feels organic I like yeah. to use vocals a lot so yeah. like I think just coming from the band I kind of feel like that's kind of where it led me I like those organic sounds the raw and it's authentic in there. Yeah, I don't want everything to be so perfect yeah for sure and I love that actually bro I was actually talking to somebody about this recently I guess to kind of draw a parallel to like hip hop and rap like Lil Uzi Vert apparently made a track and mixed it on his Beats pill. And mm-hmm. then he sent, like, the stems to, like, a professional studio. Mm-hmm. And they sent it back, and it was, like, so crisp, you know? And, yeah, yeah, and yeah. he was like, fuck this. Yeah, no, totally. There is, like, that SoundCloud sound. Like, like, hexagon? Yeah, bro. It's like, people get <laughs> so fucking tight on, hi-hat's a little high here. Can you bring <clears throat> it down half a decibel? Like, yeah, dude, yeah. it's good, okay? People don't fucking know. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, right? it's tough. Music is subjective. And so it's, that's true. At the end of the day, you kind of have to just say "fuck you" and I'm gonna do what I want to do. And yeah. if it's good for me, then it's good for you. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, uh, one instance when I made "Empty Bed," mm-hmm. um, that was was released on Monster Cat. They actually weren't feeling the whole like pre-chorus section of it. Really? They didn't like the moving bass in it. And they thought it was too busy, and they wanted something a little more uh, maybe Tiesto-ish. Um, and so it's not and, and, wrong guy and, and, bro what and I love Monster Cat and they're amazing and right, so, right, right 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 the track is dope yeah yeah and so yeah. They, you know but 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 uh, you know that's what they had that's Envision. what they were thinking at the yeah. time yep so I was like no this it it sounds good it feels good it feels like a cool raw bass line it, 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 it just feels right yeah and um and it you know caught steam and just went off is that the one that's in it's Grand Theft Auto yeah yeah yeah. He has a game of Grand Theft Auto, bro. That's the no no. Sorry, it's, talking. Grand Theft Auto. It, it, it's not in Grand Theft Auto, but the GTA streamers like got a hold of it and started. They've been streaming ripping. with it. Isn't that one of massive streams too? Yeah, uh, yeah. Right now it's got like over eleven million. That's fucking sick. Dude, yeah, that yeah, crossover yeah. is the gamers, bro. They yeah. just want to listen that to you while they drive me. The whole and, and, other world. And yeah. shout out to Monster Cat for that because they make yeah. their music available to to, yeah. to stream like royalty free or um, love that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's you know they don't get docs for it, so yeah, yeah exactly. So um, these streamers love all their stuff and so they use it, and so like, dude, it's it's a win win for everyone. Yeah, yeah, so true. Yeah. It's a whole world out there, man. And like you mentioned in synchronization earlier, I mm-hmm. feel like in the music world, and this is something I've talked a ton about, it's like there are a lot of ways to make money in music. It's mm-hmm. not just being a touring DJ. In fact, there is a price with that. I yeah. mean, how many examples yeah. are there these days? Yeah, yeah, of uh, Beachy, the greatest example of yeah, all, yeah. right? Yeah. You got to think about yourself. You got to think about the long term. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's really a wild world. But if you think about <clears throat> how many things music are involved in, video games, I mean, you yeah. think about shit like the X Games, Olympics, yeah. like, think about pop music. I don't know how many people know this, but they need to know this. Like, Lady Gaga's most recent album, Chami. Chami's credited yeah. on it, mm-hmm. Axwell, Burns, like, oh, yeah, all yeah, these yeah. guys, like, stay humble about this shit. Yeah, you know? completely. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the sync world, um, the sync world is interesting because... You still do it? Um, I, I'm, I'm still in it a little bit, but definitely not as much as I was. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the sync world is interesting because it's like, they either want... Um, something that they heard mm-hmm. from someone else. Yep. Um, so you <laughs> just a little to, different. <laughs> yeah. So you're so you're trying to like copy someone. Yeah. Um, or they want um, like filler music, stuff that is gonna go in like like MTV shows. Yeah. And if you it, if you watch an MTV show and really pay attention, the music recycles every fifteen seconds. Yeah. yeah. Like they will just churn <laughs> music. Which is great because if they use your stuff a lot, you can you know you make, make some money royalties yeah. on it. But um, it's it's kind of like, should I make a full three minute version song so you can use like yeah. or do you need like the fifteen seconds? Yeah, yeah, like I I can do like a bunch of thirty seconds. Like yeah, but, I don't know. It, it's weird. Uh, it's you know there's some guys who are doing like trailer music, which trailer. they make a oh out yeah movie trailers yeah. you know just like big huge sound design stuff and, yeah um, and that's really awesome and then but then. There's like the pop side of it, 
But a lot of sync agencies like to actually go with established artists. Really? And that's what a lot of music supervisors actually like to go with. Oh. So they'll like, like, uh, like Apple just used, um, uh, uh, Rez. Um, did they? Yeah, they well, just used Rez for their, when they released the new MacBook Pros last year. Yeah. Are you kidding me? They, yeah, that? they used Rez and, uh, uh, Death, Death Pact. Yeah. Um, their, their, their cloud together. And wow, that's, that's aggressive. Yeah. But they, um, I mean, it's really you know, makes it's you like want a Mac. <laughs> it's that like, it's that like super like like hard like mid tempo shit, which is super dope, and it, and it worked for them. But a lot of yeah. the, uh, music supervisors like using established artists because they know that it's can, coming from something, and they right. can they can post about it. And right, like, right, right, right. So right. if you're just a random sync artist, like it's really hard to do anything. That's true. Yeah. So you kind of yeah, it's it's a weird it's a weird world. I'm always so interested in it, and I think a lot of artists out there, a lot of the people that watch this show are up-and-coming artists and are trying to make a career in the music industry, and I'm always trying to get the perspective of people like <coughs> you who have had their hands in a lot of pots in the past, so yeah, yeah, I appreciate sure. that insight. Yeah, yeah totally. Um, so I want to dive a little bit deeper into your remixes and bootlegs. You mentioned some of your originals, mm-hmm. but um, it's really pretty incredible, man. And before we talk about any tracks, it's obvious to me when you make these remixes and bootlegs that you're having a fucking time <laughs> yeah <totally. laughs> yeah i'm usually if i'm making a remix or bootleg, like, it's usually for a song that i already like yeah unless yeah. it was like a hey do this remix for so and so it didn't go through yeah yeah, or, yeah. Uh, but so i'll release it as a bootleg right that's kind of what happened with with WAP. so really? i was yeah, gonna ask about yeah, that one yeah yeah, yeah, so, yeah so i got the stems for it <laughs> i got the stems for it they were the potentially yeah, going to release a remix pack for her. Wow. Um, and then they That's said insane. no because they wanted Diplo. Oh, instead. oh my God. God. Diplo. Yeah, so. Uh, <laughs> Imagine but, Nicki Minaj performing with you well, on that song. What was super dope was uh, <laughs> Kalina Zanders, if you know who that is. I know Kalina. Yeah, She's been yeah. on the vibe. Yeah, yeah. So she actually, we actually did a version of it um, with her vocals doing their suppose in this house section Hell yeah. with like all these crazy harmonies it sounded like sounded oh, like seen. choir like gospel thing she it was, was amazing. super dope i'm astonished that they didn't want to work with it but <laughs> but, but you know something like that where it's just like oh I, you know i can get the sam and i'll try to do a remix for him and then yeah. it, it falls through it's like okay i'll, I'll do it like right I'll, I'll still release it right but it has to be a that track is insane yeah that track yeah. is insane and it's i think fun. it's so cool i mean you've remixed isis by Joanna Lucas and featuring Logic. Yeah, I, I, I love that one. I feel like was that, that the first one, the first remix, first bootleg that you did. No, the first one was Sicko Mode. It was Sicko Mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I can tell because it's like oh, it's, <laughs> you know, yeah, he yeah, knows. Yeah. Nobody else knows. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah but I love the ISIS one. There's so many cool elements in that, but I, I feel like it's a little hard. Yeah. I feel like unless you're like. Great rage. It's dope though, and yeah. it, it just showcases like how you can be so versatile like that. Like you yeah. really just said, WAP, I mean, push a tease, sociopath, mm-hmm. then blow express yourself, nightmare yeah. Zeus, man's person yeah. ambition. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can literally turn anything into grunge house. Yeah. I mean, if you if, if there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it's all about I guess um, uh, just curating the sound, mm-hmm. reprocessing know? the sound. Yeah. Exactly. I I like to kind of like really fuck things up and a lot of saturation and just. Make them sound dirty and gross. I can yeah. See how I can how it could fit together. Maybe. Like like you express yourself when I use some Bro. crazy <laughs> drum beat that's like that one's so outrageous. Sick. Like no one's dancing to it, but I just kind of wanted to see like I'm what dancing. like how how crazy could I make something and still make it like a yep. house song. So do you understand that like no one else is doing that though? Like, no one else is putting that shit. I mean, I was going to say, I was about to say, bro, what have you learned? (laughs) Bro, so, like, with the Evanescence track, that's the one I can compare it to. Like, Mm -hmm. I remember seeing that track at a birthday party, and they're like, this has way too much sub. And I was like, hey, I appreciate your opinion, but fuck you. <laughs> I love Brian like, and John. Love Brian and John. Yeah, I love Brian and John. Night, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but like, but like, I was like, I was like, I like it as is, and that track is my most streamed track, and that Louis track is all sub and like distorting reverb throws yeah, and yeah. like whatever. It's, messy. it's like it's not even it's not even like an actual sound. I'm literally distorting reverb on yeah. the sound mm-hmm. through half of that. And so you know, like, you know what's crazy about that one when you first sent it to me, I was just like. This is super dope. I don't know about like the future bass thing on the second half. Like, oh, for which one? For the crawling. For th- oh, maybe that's what it was. Yeah, crawling. Yeah, okay. He did Sorry, not like my, it. My bad. Did not like the future bass part for crawling. But it's you, but 
Yeah, yeah, but hearing it last night, I was like, oh, it totally works. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 there we so go. I said to him, I was like, this courage, I was like, no, no, but no, like, I was I was like, I'm pretty sure I said like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's an anthem. <laughs> you can listen yeah, to hearing yeah. it live, I, you know, it was so cool for me last night, it was like, literally your number one fan. Um, hey, I don't know. I don't know if anybody was watching me, but I was sweating. Dude, there's a video. There's a video of, there's a the video of me night. jumping my intro, just yeah. jumping up like this. <laughs> I've been waiting on this my whole life. But I heard so many of these songs live for the first time, mm-hmm. and that's why I was like kind of digging in a little earlier. Like for Flynn sure. is really getting to be himself, mm-hmm. yeah. and this man was fucking sweaty when he came off too. And yeah, I was busting, like, bro. I was like, you, you took this? your shirt off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now you went in shirtless. Yeah. I, went, <laughs> I, went, I went in shirtless. I thought Mint said you just like took it off. Bro, I did not have time to do that. Well, then you're gonna start DJing shirtless sooner or later. That's Bro, sure. it's just I knew I was gonna sweat, and you were fucking drenched. Uh, yeah, it was you were totally drenched. Yeah, I mean, I had like big old heavy but that's, overalls on. You know what's crazy is like when Gracie's in the audience. My <laughs> hey, Gracie. Hi, Gracie. When I remember, <laughs> I remember my mom and her came for the North Coast, and like that was the song I closed out with. Mm-hmm. And like my mom and Gracie are bawling like in the crowd. <laughs> And like the I was your bass hits. Yeah, it's yeah. just like it's a good, it does. It it's does. a good it's a good like what you do in some of your shit, those like counter where it's like melodic and whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that really builds the hard yeah. drops. Yeah, so, totally. I no, it, that, yeah, totally, totally. Like I specifically remember that moment. I was like, oh shit, like that future bass kinda works. Yeah. <laughs> but that's live and that's that's the thing that, that is just, you know, you can't you can't you can't always get across on a recording. Is yeah. that live that live feeling. So true. And so it's, you know, it's why shows are just so important. It's mm-hmm. just, you just, the energy and the vibe is so different. Yeah. It's so different, yeah. man. Unbelievable. You're yeah. bumping out. I mean, you just gotta do original shit. Like, yeah. that's why I like yeah. that. That's why the Diplo remix works. I used to literally, like, just be pounding out reps of chest press to that. <laughs> I was yeah. just like, yeah, I can see that. It's like, what is it? Bad, 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 bad. It's like so fast, too. And it's yeah. like all drums, right? Yeah, it's it's like, like all drums designed to bass. And I, that, that one I clipped to shit. Yeah. So if you if you put if you put songs on in, like, Logic and just go, I literally saw this with the Nirvana one. That's why I brought it up. He's like 4 dB over. Yeah. No, mo- no master, like not a limiter. Oh, no, no. I have a limiter. I don't know. Maybe it's just food. I don't know. Maybe my shit is fucked up. But yeah. it sounds, it still sounds great, even, like redlining. But like it works for your shit. For, for a while, I, my, my master chain was basically a clipper at the end. And I would just clip it without actually limiting it. Yeah. So it was just, just clip the fuck out. So it was a sausage. <laughs> so, if, so yeah. I mean, for a while I was wow. doing that. <laughs> now I've gotten a little more conservative with it, but a more I, Dude, I, I feel like I love that. I feel like I'm always like just trying to, I don't know, toy with things, see what, see how I can. I mean, you're not making yeah. elevator music, so... Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Sync music, maybe. Yes, elevator music. No, true, I, true, dude, true. I, I like it's like controlled chaos a little bit with you guys. Yeah, right? and that, that's what I kind of like about it. Yeah, yeah bro. And, yeah. That's what people get on with. Yeah, like, that's yeah. why I yeah. want to be a fan, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And that's how you really like... I mean, as a bass house fan, you know, it's like, I want aggressive shit. Like, I want shit that I'm like, I haven't heard before. Or yeah, like, yeah. When you put your spins on shit like this, I mean, it's so awesome. You know, yeah, it's fun for sure. And what you said earlier, you remix or bootleg songs that you love. Flynn's done the same thing. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah, I think one of the yeah. So I did sicko mode because I, I did that one because it was kind of like, oh, okay, this is popular right song now. Band. Like, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll do this. I'll see how, you know what I can do with it. And I think the second one I did though was Nine Inch Nails, March of the Pigs, mm-hmm. which so happy. Which the original is like it has like a five four. Count, yeah. Yeah, which is like super strange. <laughs> so, I, so, so, I, so I had to make it to a 4-4 four, four count, um, which actually sounds pretty good. But like, but the, the part where, you know, he's like, Step right up. Yeah. Like, I just want, I want to fucking see people rage to that. Yeah. But I think I've only played it like twice and people are just like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's like, all right, all right, maybe. Bro, maybe that's it. Yeah, I don't know. While I thought about that, a live set for you is, what was Lost Lands like? Lost Lands? Lost Lands was cool. Lost Lands is a trip because it's in the middle of... Nowhere. Yeah, it's in the middle of uh, farmland. In basically. Ohio. Yeah. From from where our hotel was, it's like right next to the airport. Mm-hmm. You have to take a, like a 40, 45 minute Holy bus shit. out there. Um, and so bus. we do these like bus transfers like yeah. constantly throughout the day. Um, and you get out there and probably within like... Once you're like five minutes out, you can actually start Hearing. feeling the 
feeling and like hearing the bass. <laughs> That's why they have to have it in the farm. Jesus. Yeah. Farm. It like once you once you get there and like we like where the like where the artists um, camp was. Yeah. Was like right behind the main stage. Jesus Christ. The main stage looked like based on, like one of these buildings here. Like, it was <laughs> massive. And the bass is like, it emanates through your soul. It, it takes <laughs> off. Shaking. It like, it emanates cleans up all your, your pores and <laughs> pushes out all your blackheads. Like, dude, it's like, well, let's go. Get skincare routine. Dude, it, Lost Lands. No, it is, it is intense bass. So, like, once you get used to that, um, sure. it's cool. Uh, so, yeah, so the stage that I played on was, I think it was called the Forest Stage. Or That's the one that Mysteria played on, too, right? Uh, yeah. I yeah, was, yeah, yeah. I was, was, he was right before me. How many bass house artists play at Lost Lands? Because that's, like, a pretty big deal. Yeah, it? that's why. Like, like I think, I'm pretty sure this, or uh, last year was the first year that they had, like, a house stage. Was, like, Abstract was there last year or something like that? Uh, or before COVID? Uh, Oh, maybe. Uh, yeah. Like, in the previous Lost Lands? Yeah, Lines? yeah. Okay, maybe. Maybe it was the second year? Yeah. I don't know. Um, I, for, I, or maybe he played just a, a normal stage. I think this was the first one where they had uh, a house actual stage. house stage? House stage. The whole... That's crazy. Most of them were, were, were house. Because, okay. like, uh, Fresh and Bijou were there. Mysteria was okay. there. Um, G-House, Bass House, yeah. though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but it was fun. It's in the middle of... Uh, Farmland, but then it kind of turns into like the woods. Yeah. Um, and like <laughs> dinosaurs. Yeah. Everywhere. I mean, you just it's it's fun. It it feels like you're actually out in this weird festival. <clears throat> Super cool. What was that like, like as just, a yeah? What was nervous. that like as a bass house artist, but a bass fest? Um, it's weird, right? Because yeah, because everybody's like just right, you know fucking killing their necks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but the way this. The way the wood stage or the forest stage was was set up, it, it was kind of like secluded. So like you could actually take a break from all the dev stuff. And nice. You could and you could kind of like go over the hill, vibe out to some house stuff. Yeah. And um, and they had this cool little, um, it's like castle. Uh, I don't know, like a sculpture. It was, it was just kind of like this piece of of like building <laughs> that that looked like an abandoned like almost like an abandoned like zoo. A chateau. Like, yeah, like clay with, like, where a bathroom maybe was at some point. I don't know. Um, Lost but, land. Yeah. Lost yeah. land. Yeah. But, it was like, but, but it was part of this, like, like dinosaur sculpture thing. Okay. And all, all these little weird parts that you could kind of play in. Um, and so you could just kind of chill there and, like, watch the show. And, like, yeah. the lights were really cool. And, um, and so when Mysteria and I played um, and X and G uh, played... Like it was still pretty light out. Mm. It was still it was it was really? cool. People were starting to vibe. I think when I played, Excision was playing. Oh, damn. so it was like, God, it. <laughs> it was like okay, <laughs> why you gotta do my man? Yeah, like, that? like Excision. What you're the watching hell? this. Like, Excision. I think it was his. It was his rehab set. So like everybody wanted to go is like see the old school stuff. And is like, that what it is? I thought it was like chill, dubstep. Is that a thing? <laughs> uh, the rehab? Melodic dubstep. I thought the rehab was oh maybe it, maybe it's a melodic. He plays like I, three seconds. I know right? yeah three because yeah. maybe the his throwback was called something else, but I'm pretty sure the rehab one was when I was playing. Was three it? during and post therapy sets. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. If I if I had to go, I am a fan of music. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I have trouble with rhythm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you yeah, and yeah, both, yeah. bro. I don't have trouble with it. I just don't. I don't get it, honestly. I mean, I, I yeah. I mean, it's it's not totally my my thing, but I I respect how fucking aggressive it is. That's what and I like, agree with too. I yeah. I respect like how you have these girls wearing like absolutely nothing with these huge combat boots on that just are going just, crazy, like, fucking nailing their heads. Yeah. In the yeah. It's a culture unlike any other. Yeah, yeah. That's it's, what I respect it's so wild. much about. So I, it's great. Yeah, and just yeah, to be out there in the in the in the woods with all those people, it's just like it's a it's fun. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I had to ask an artist who's played there before. So. Yeah, yeah. Bijou and Doctor Fresh's set like was kind of when the light or when the sun started to go down, mm -hmm. light started to come on. It was a whole vibe, and so it was it was really cool. Yeah, they're fucking legends. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's awesome. Yeah, they're actually some big innovators as well. So of course, yeah, 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 totally. And to see where Doctor Fresh has has made it to at this point as well. Yeah, he's yeah. just like a different lane. Than everyone else, he's, he's like a homie. he's right. Tony smoked a blunt in my car. If you remember, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. and then asked if it was That's okay what after. Flynn is and famous it was. for it. Yeah, <laughs> That's amazing. That's yeah. amazing. He's really nice about it. Uh, Real nice about it. Yeah, yeah. I'm okay. actually releasing a, a single 
uh, with Bijou's label. Oh, soon. yeah, D&D. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, in, it's I, good. Think, I think in June. It's good. All right. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good track. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah it's, it's a good track. Fuck, yes. Yeah. That's awesome. It's man. a little different-ish. Yeah. Is, no, it's dope. Well, you've been making some really fucking dope originals. Uh, you. Your most recent one, um, what is it? Uh, My Girl? My Girl, yeah, yeah. This Dang is it. an incredible track, dude. This has, like, levels to it. It's, Thanks, like, man. it's pretty cutting edge, honestly. Let's enjoy this one together. This one's called My Girl by St. Punk. What's all about me? What's all together or do they like one element yeah do they like another element or yeah do they like just you know so it's, um, yeah i love that i yeah. feel like these days man like with production and collaborations and labels there's like no limits anymore especially after Completely, the pandemic yeah, yeah. like people are so open to new music totally and <clears throat> it's just so cool to see all these fusions of like someone like you mm. i mean this track is like it's really fucking good man yeah, yeah. Thank you know like i i love it like yeah, yeah. As, a, as a house dj yeah. Yeah, yeah i would drop that shit yeah for sure as a bass house dj i would drop that shit yeah like it's sure. versatile and that's hard thing to accomplish yeah first time I played it out was last night actually i, I, I think the, i think i did good yeah, yeah, yeah I, 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 I it sounded great it. Yeah. i loved it man yeah. it's awesome bro. yeah yeah um so I did skip over a question I have to ask. Oh yeah, of course. Go ahead. I got a lot of questions here. Yeah, We're yeah. not gonna have to oh, answer them all. Jeez, it's like a. Don't be intimidated by my iPad, okay? <laughs> Don't be. I didn't even bring the Apple pencil. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know that'd be a little much. Usually I do, and it's a lot. I didn't get the. But you said you, you said to take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's oh, a little yeah. much. Yeah. I'm not gonna use it today. <laughs> but you have a lot of incredible official remixes, and the one I want to ask you about is "Better with You" by Blau and Justin Caruso. All right, let's check out this incredible remix together. This one's called Better With You by Blau and Justin Caruso featuring Aislinn in the St. Punk remix. Back for the Yeah, I guess it would have to be, because um, 
He asked the tough questions. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm not. I'm thinking back. I guess that was the bottom. Oh, yeah. Hey. Uh, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. I nailed it. He, Get me the pencil. <laughs> he researches his shit. Like Get that. me the pencil, director. Yeah, yeah, yeah we got yeah. the pencil. <laughs> I told you that. <clears throat> there you go. Class is in session, bitch. <laughs> Way more. Continue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Noted. Uh, it's a little too big for my ear. Like this. <laughs> yeah. So. That was actually the first, I think that was, I think that may have been one of the, maybe like the second official remix that I got, um, that, and it was definitely more on like the pop side. Yeah. Yep. So, so what I had to do, and I'm pretty sure I did with that one, is I, I would get the stems and I would take the vocal, and I'm pretty sure the vocal uh, for the original is in a major key, mm-hmm. so I would take the vocal and melodyne the vocal yeah. and adjust it. To, to sit in a minor yeah. key, melodyne. So it's I would, expensive. Yeah, <laughs> expensive so, plug-in. So I'm like, so I'm altering the <clears throat> vocal melody just a little bit, but still, it's it's. I mean, the original is still intact. Yeah, you know? absolutely. But just to kind of bring it more into my vibe and just make it fit. It's make it sound. Yeah, yeah. So, but uh, yeah, I think that was the first one for Honda. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you've gone on to do well over ten tracks with them, including yeah, album, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. We yeah, we had a, a couple singles um, in 2019 with them. Which were great, um, and then uh, you know, pandemic hit, and we were, um, I think we were doing more with them. I think we kind of bounced around through a couple other labels like Thrive, mm-hmm. um, uh, Martin Garrix's label Stamp, yeah, yeah. Stampede, Stamp, Stamp, yeah, yeah. Stamp, yeah, Big Beat, Dim Mac, yeah, 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 of course, yeah, 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 yeah. got a great resume, it's amazing. yeah, totally. And then um, they were just like, hey, let's let's do an album. So I was like, okay. what was that like releasing an album on a label that's traditionally not very bassy? Yeah. Uh, it yeah. was. You want the pencil? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Toss it here, bro. I think I should change seats. I guess this, is, certain... this is a speaking torch, yeah. <laughs> Wait, I want the punch. I need to write it out in my shoe. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, it was. Yeah, I mean, so, yeah, so Armada's like super, you know, Armada. super like, you know, they, could, they got their vibe in. So I think they kind of took a chance on me because I don't necessarily fit in with, with everything else that they do. Mm-hmm. But I. I think that's kind of what they liked about it. Yeah. Um, so with the album, I was I was definitely more in the like album mode. Yeah. Definitely thinking less about uh, you know banger singles, more thinking about like concept. Yes. Um, which you I'm know say. it you like love it or hate it. That's just that's what you know that's what it is. And so yeah. you know some some people really connected with it. Some people nece- didn't necessarily, mm-hmm. but. That's that's okay because it's you know it's yeah what it was all about, um, and they were they were really supportive uh, throughout the whole process and um, and yeah it was, it was it was good I'm I'm glad I did it it's huge yeah. and it's so it's amazing to hear and refreshing because you know the label world you know is even someone who works at a label it's a, it's uncharted territory still for so many artists right a lot of artists think they have to release on big labels to make it big a lot of labels don't want to work with certain artists because it doesn't fit. And to hear about a label that takes a chance on you mm-hmm. with dope. their, you know, discography, their catalog that may not fit the bill, so to speak, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is a 14-track album. Like, this is literally a fucking album. Yeah. I mean, you're an animal, dude, honestly. <laughs> Five original singer collabs, incre- incredible originality. Again, obvious that you're having fun with this. Yeah, yeah, totally. It was, it was definitely, like I said, it was a concept, so there's lots of songs on there that don't fit in with the, the base house thing. Yeah. Or but it was like if I'm making an album, I'm making a fucking concept because it's yeah. what I'm feeling right now and that's just what it was. So yeah, like Holy Wars, I love that. Um, mm-hmm. that that collab we did. Um, I love the one that we that I did with, with Matt McAndrew. That's gloves. Yeah. Gloves. Yeah. That's gloves is ones. literally yes. I listened to it uh, honestly for the first time. Uh, the other day, and I was literally rocking out. By yeah, I had both hands up like this. It's, it's, it's a fun. He's not ride. joking. I'm yeah, not it's joking. Fun. I mean, yeah. and that one kind of pumps me up. That kind of gets me back in like the band days. Yes, and, yeah. So I'm just like fuck yeah. Yeah, it's like probably can't play it out, but fuck yeah, it's so yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's amazing. Yeah, but yeah, he's 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 an amazing vocalist. Um, we collabed before on a song called Warning, mm-hmm. which was also on Armada. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's a good friend, lives lives nearby, and so we're just like, fuck, let's just get It's awesome. Yeah, it's good. So the album is called Auroboros. Am I saying that right? Ouroboros. Ouroboros. Wow. Yeah. Ouroboros. 
should have yeah. asked you to say it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I take the pencil back. <laughs> <laughs> what is, so what exactly does that mean? Um, it's ba- like the actual uh, symbol is a snake eating its own tail, um, which basically symbolizes like the, the cycle of, of life. Wow. Um, it, it can symbolize other things too, like fertility. Um, but how I saw it in the context of the album mm-hmm. was basically like, it's, I mean, it's heavily about 2020 and kind of the frustration that kind of came with just all of a sudden, you know, shows stopping, yeah. not having what, you, you know, just not being able to really do anything. You were like blowing up rise that happened. Yeah, too. exactly. I was, I was supposed to like, you know, go on some tours and like, then it's just like, just cut everything out. And yeah, it, for me, it was, for me, it was really hard. And, um, so it was just kind of about the day-to-day frustrations, kind of my evolution from the beginning of it to the end of it, also feeling like everything was Groundhog Day. Yeah. Just kind of this constant... We all... Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Con- this weird. constant cycle, just kind of repeating itself. So a lot of the album was just like me dealing with my emotions, like just on a daily basis. And the wow. whole thing is kind of like... A cycle. Yeah. yeah. Fe- feeling all of those emotions in one day was possible. It's amazing. Yeah. So I, w- I mean, you kind of answered my question is like... <clears throat> There are some bangers on here, right? Like Comatose, Three Days, Closer Tonight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tracks that hit. Yeah, yeah. But did you want it to be like 50-50, like anthems versus like... I I felt like the only way that I could get my my concept and message across was to do it like that. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't think I could really tell the whole story with just bass house bangers the entire time. That's not really an album, right? Yeah, Yeah. exactly. You're doing your own artistry. It's not a story. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. So I even wrote interludes because I felt like... putting are dope! Putting the the track list together, I felt like something needs to come in between this, you know, and it just, yeah, just felt like it it needed... It it felt like it needed everything that it it had. Mm -hmm. And I even sang on one of them because it felt like I needed... Yeah, you did. Did you? Yeah, Underwater. Yeah. The... I think it's the last track on your album. Is last wow. I yeah, it's close. It's the best you do. I'm a super fan. <laughs> I don't know if you guys put two and two together. Uh, fangirling over here on the couch. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah. Just sprinkle a little bit of area. So, what do, you, what do you think as, like, the album culture? I think the last EDM artist I remember doing, like, an album prior to you mm-hmm. would be, like, Jaws releasing that, was it, a 24-track, like, ridiculous... DJ like, Snake had a pretty good one. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, so, yeah, I feel like Snake does a lot of albums. Like, what, what do you sure. think, what do you think in terms of, like, do you think, like, the album is dead? Like, because like, we live in a singles world, we all know that right now, but I think the concept of an album is something that is so dope and it's overlooked. Yeah, I don't know. I think, you know, I think it, it really depends. I think maybe the, like... Uh, the ethereal, like, concept album. I, I don't know if everyone's going to, like, get that. I don't know if they have enough attention for that. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that, you know, some people love it, and that's who I was trying to reach. But I feel like, yeah, artists can still make albums. Jack U made a fucking album that, like, blew up for, like, three years. Yeah. Like, it, you know, it was, yeah. it was a great album. I mean, um, maybe one of the... Greatest dance music yeah. album. Yeah, Major Lazer makes yeah. great albums. Yeah, DJ Snake makes great albums. Skrillex, when he puts out an album, everyone fucking listens to it. Well, it sounds, yeah. it, it sounds like the album was for like more so for you as a way to like express that yeah. pent up emotion. Yeah, exactly. So, it, and which is it, I think it, it sounds like more beneficial. Yeah, you yeah. Know? yeah. The album, like I said, was I was trying to tell a story, yeah. and that's that's how I was able to really really tell it. But yeah, albums. I mean, you know the largest artists in the game, like, they can still release albums. They could, yeah. yeah, of course. I think it's coming back. Yeah, yeah. Jack Harlow. I think, um, Future. Yeah, yeah. Swedish House Mafia. Swedish House you know, Mafia. There's yeah, yeah. Low interview. Totally. You know, he was kind of pushing them, like, you guys have only done singles, you know, you had, like, some album, so to speak, but not a true album, like, mm-hmm. a true artist, like, it was just hit after hit. And I just interviewed these Chicago DJs, uh, Win It Woo. Oh, yeah, 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 you can get the remix for them, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And so they're releasing an album called 10 Years, and they started their project 10 years ago, gotcha. right? And they've had tons of releases on Armada yeah, yeah, and, you know, been all official this. remixes, yeah. right? And I asked them that hard question, and I think during the pandemic, you know, not to say it's a silver lining, because it is not, there's no real silver lining when it comes down to yeah. it, people that died and everything, but there's a truth to it that artists 
had to find out why I'm really doing this. Yeah. And if it's not for the music, they faded away. Yeah. And during that time, a lot of these artists were like, fuck it, man. Like, they literally went to Joshua Tree and just literally, like, made music that they loved without yeah, yeah. anybody saying, you're doing an official remix for Katy Perry, so we need it to be really wood and wood. Right, right. You know, totally, like, yeah. this is going to be out on this out this label, and we're going to try and get it on the Mint Spotify playlist. So, mm. like, have that in your head, you right, know? Right, right, yeah. And now I feel like... Fans are so much more open to artists getting to be unapologetically themselves. So I think, I think it's a too. special time yeah. now. Yeah, one hundred percent. I think like for for sure, twenty twenty was definitely time for everyone to experiment. Yeah, everyone started doing streams. Mm-hmm. Diplo Fucking put out like stream. calm music. Yeah, like, <laughs> like, like which, which was like yeah yeah, yeah hey, why, not? why not yeah um, yeah and everyone was doing something different. So I mean it was. It, I feel like we all kind of got to flex flex that muscle a little yeah, bit. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like it only makes the industry stronger just because it really brings us back to the roots a little bit. Mm-hmm. I think the concept of everybody's a DJ is finally starting to die off a little bit. Because, yeah. yeah, there's still a lot of DJs out there, but people that are trying to make it as artists that are actually DJs who are now producer DJs. And it has always been DJ producer. And yeah. I'm seeing that flip happen because of artists like yourself that are like, dude... You know, do your fucking thing, but I'm going to make this album, and if my fans love it, that's great, because that's who I'm doing it for, but most importantly, I loved it, Yeah, yeah. I love this process. Yeah, yeah, I kind of feel like DJing live, it's like, it, it wasn't always, like, what I wanted to do, I wasn't like, I want to be a DJ. You yeah. wanted like, to make music. I wanted to make music, Yeah, and with the way that I kind of started to make music, like, how do you, how do you present it to people mm-hmm. through being a DJ? Yeah. And, and... I, that's a good you one. Know, okay. And and yeah. certain you know some people said like oh you, you know you could start doing like live stuff now or like you know maybe sing live or maybe bring out like uh, like live instruments and you know, that kind of stuff. And it's like mm, I've kind of always been against that because you can't you can't compete with perfection yeah, when true. it comes to like a perfected sounding song. Yeah, yeah. production. Yeah. yeah, Justin Bieber tries to sing over a Jack Eve song and. Yeah. It sounds okay. Yeah, <laughs> like but live it's it's just like, nicely. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't work. hit the same. It doesn't work right. Yeah. yeah. And so I've always been kind of against like the, the live thing. So so DJing is mm-hmm. it's kind of like that's yeah it's it's the way to present it. It's a guaranteed way to deliver your music. That's a really yeah. good way to put it. Yeah. 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 That's interesting. I actually haven't heard somebody with that perspective. I feel like yeah. everybody's like trying to figure out this hybrid model of high, like live DJing. You know, it's like. I hate it. There's there's some people that are actually really, really good at it. But yeah. They, I mean, they're like, they're like virtuosos. Dabbing. Yeah. Dabbing, for example. Yeah, yeah. Dabbing. They, they can sing. like, yeah, they can, uh, yeah, where, you know, if they're like playing all the instruments. Playing guitar and, and like, DJing. Yeah, and like, drum pad. Cool. Yeah. Oh, I mean, like Sullivan King, like he fucking shreds. Oh, yeah. That guy's insane. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So but, like, and, but he does it sparingly. Yes. He just sprinkles in like one or two songs with his guitar because it's kind of like mm-hmm. his, his shtick, like. Yep. That's what pe- that's what gets people fucking rowdy and like yeah. it's but it's cool because she just throws it in and he goes back to like this thing. So Yeah, it's funny. It's not like, overdone. Yeah, it's exactly. not to take away from like live instrumentalists, but like one of my best friends is a literally a lawyer and I swear to god this is the best piano player in the fucking world. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like there's so many talented musicians out there and there's a good and bad aspect to that because um, you know, I love LP Gob. She's amazing, and she does a great job live. Beast. Incredible yeah. piano house female artist. She's awesome. She's pushing this whole like female femme house movement. Mm. But people see her play the piano live, and they're like, "Oh my fucking god! Yeah. <laughs> she's playing the piano!" Yeah, I'm like, it's Whoa. sick. Like, yo, like <laughs> easy. You know what I mean? So like, I see what you're saying. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. deliver it because uh, your music is gonna be your music, but. Yeah, I think, and also, at the, on the other side of that coin, it does differentiate you to yeah. do a little bit different, so I think my point yeah, is, there's I, no right or wrong answer. No, yeah. com- completely not. Yeah, I feel like, I, I feel like vocals and uh, DJing, like, they don't, they don't work quite mm-hmm. that well. Uh, little, little guitar things here and there, or like even live drums, I've seen like Travis Berger come out and like do a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like some of that works. Yeah, that works. Um, if you're Travis Barker. If no. Travis Barker, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But sometimes I feel like sometimes it sounds tacky. Yeah. yeah, it has to it has to be right. Yeah. And you and you just can't overdo right. it and you really have to like whoever your mix engineer is really has to nail it. 
really Because if the drums are just blasting the, the rest of the music, like... It's awful. You're just... Also live, too, like... Yeah. We couldn't have had a singer there last night. You know what I mean? Fuck no. Yeah, 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 exactly, right? Yeah. Like, I could... Yeah, I could barely hear myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But you brought up, like, Kalina earlier. She's, like, to me, like, a shining example of someone that can really perform yeah. well live. Yeah. She's, you know? she's great. Yeah, yeah. she's... Yeah, she's... She's, like, one of the... I feel like she's our generation's, like, staple when it comes to, like, female vocalists. Yeah, like, you know, she space. is. She's, the, she's still yeah. underrated, so, yeah, for honestly, sure. but... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's always kind of a hot topic, because now that performing is back, like, people want to go out and see shows, but it's like, I don't want to go out and see any old DJ, so it's like, a little bit does go a long way, so... Well, I mean, we had Jenny Boss at North Coast. Yeah, people and were like, like, wow, they've got people, a live singer, people and I'm like, like, yeah, this there's guy, a lot of singers out there. Like, sidebar, my parents were like, why don't you perform, like, Sherm? Because he was like really an entertainer. He's like on the mic, like, what the fuck is up? I do festivals and quinceañeras. Four mitzvahs. Four mitzvahs. What? Let me know. But, but like he's pulling out all the stops, and I feel like even then it's like, I feel like almost this sounds terrible, but like execution almost doesn't have to hit for someone like you who's coming yeah. up and me who's coming up to like if you have a singer that separates you. That'd be like, oh, who's that guy with the singer? Yeah, yeah festival. You know? I mean, I if you can pull it off and do it, fuck. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah just for sure. it's both. Yeah. yeah you know? Exactly. The yeah. time and a place. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Time and a place. Yeah. For sure. Huh. I do uh, do bar mitzvahs. Uh, Five thousand dollars for an hour. Good. I know. Uh, show up. You gotta have all the equipment there. Do you do circumcisions? I do circumcisions. <laughs> and sure. on that note, just so people know, Jewish people invented yes, circumcision. Do. Okay. Oh. It's a fact. Everybody like, like it. are you circumcised? Like, yeah, I'm fucking circumcised, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't come up in a while, but just in case anyone's wondering. Have you read the Old Testament? <laughs> I was, I mean, that's how we're going to do our handshake. Yeah. So was, <laughs> listen, you see this pencil? This is a circumcised pencil, okay, right here. You bring it off the top like this. <laughs> and then you just start, you just start mushing it into things. <laughs> he does it all. <laughs> My parents weren't wrong. And check this out. Little dick right there. Oh, too, yeah. a little condom. Uh, a little condom, condom, yeah. A little charger for your dick. Apple... Doing with this pencil? <laughs> anyway. doing, doing the Chicago handshake? Yeah, uh, whew, I'm getting famous for that. It might bite me in the ass. I have a track coming out in a month that's called Chicago Handshake. He does. Not lying. Yeah, and uh, it bangs. It bangs. Yeah, it what, bangs. Good track. Is it about the Chicago handshake? It is. Or is it's it just like, inspired? It's a. It's my buddy and I made it. I was actually interviewing somebody live when Gracie were there and. We were talking about Chicago handshakes, and my fiance brought over me a Chicago handshake. Oh, Danny Deal. And the chick that I interviewed didn't do one, so I'm just like getting fucked up during the interview. <laughs> and she's like this super well spoken, like, literally has done a TED talk. Oh yeah, my gosh. and I'm like <laughs> taking fucking Chicago handshakes. Yeah, like, yeah. so Surrounded. tell me about women, STEM, and EDM, you know? Like, uh. <laughs> so a great interview, oh, but yeah. ever since then. Who wants another handshake? Yeah, who wants another handshake? And now, now. People come to visit to do Chicago handshakes, so now I'm like, oh fucking a, I'm the Chicago handshake guy. But, <laughs> I mean, I have to have one now. We're gonna. Do oh, it. All, all right, right all right, all right, all right, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> later, later. No problem. Yeah. Flips like, right like that in a dime, right there. Absolutely, flips like that in a dime. But oh man, okay. Whew. I'm really amped up. Right Sorry, now. we <laughs> got. <laughs> we went all over the world right there. We did, we did. The sun, the sun hasn't been on 45 days. So. I know. I'm, this is unbelievable yeah. for anybody who's in Chicago. You brought the sun. Yeah. Today is uh, Saturday the 7th, and it's been a month since we've seen the sun. So Yeah, yeah I mean, this is an amazing backdrop for yeah. that shit now. It's not bad. Because it usually just like super gray. Gloomy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Depression. <laughs> Why do you think this <laughs> house works here, bro? Uh, People are sure. sad. They need rage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 It's funny, we get, we get like one half nice day here and the entire city just like comes out of the fucking woodworks yeah. and we're like, mm, okay, yeah. <laughs> why do we all live here? <laughs> <laughs> but, then, but then like summer, like you were saying, it's like <clears throat> months, right? Or I, is it like yeah, a, like, it's like one month. I hang my hat, one month. I hang my hat on the fact that like, because we experience like seasons and like the lows of weather, like when it is a nice day, like it's so much better. Yeah. You know? Like, I mean, are you, where are you originally from? Los Angeles. You're from, you're, so you're both originally from Los Angeles, right? So, like, Christmas is, it's sunny. Isn't my girlfriend off? 75. Yeah. Courtney, shout out Courtney. 75. 75. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. well, you know, like, I grew up in Indiana, and, like, if it was snowing on Christmas, it's like, it's really Christmas today, you know? Or, like, any any type of holiday. Yeah, yeah, being from SoCal, it's kind of like, 
like an 80 Christmas is like great. This is like, <laughs> how do you how do you make okay. such aggressive music Stand when up. your weather is so nice? Because I go to LA and I make vibey, happy music. Yeah, and, uh, I don't know. I I was never into that like vibey like. You're like super, fuck the beach, like, bro. Super like Malibu like vibes. I was always like into like the punk scene and like just yeah. Downtown uh, LA. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Great, great punk rock scene in LA. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, I kind of go back to like No Effects and like some of that like some of that old school punk stuff like The Descendants, Bad Religion, Pennywise, nice, like all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. LA is such a great place, man. I mean, the amount of like culture that's there and just like vibrancy and the types of people and uh, you know. People say it's a transplant city, which it kind of is, but the people of LA are amazing people. Like people that are really from Los Angeles, like you guys. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Real ones. But I feel like yeah. a lot of people don't actually meet when you, especially if you visit LA, like you don't really meet people that are from LA because they're like, it's, I'm not yeah. rare at bitch, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's kind of a joke. Like every yeah. time you get in an Uber, you know, um, before the pandemic, <laughs> when you would actually like talk to your Uber driver, yeah. uh, you know, you'd be like, oh, where are you from? Blah, blah, blah. And we're just like, we're from LA. You'd be like, wow. <laughs> you get, get anyone in here like that. Wow. Yeah, yeah. What do you know? Yeah, because everyone's like from the Midwest. Yes. Yeah, a lot, so of, a lot of Midwest. We fucking leave so fast. Yeah. <laughs> A lot, a lot of people from the Midwest go. Yeah, to yeah, for sure. It's the opposite lifestyle. Yeah, but be, you know, but it is cool. Ellie's a mixing or a melting pot, so it's yeah, and that's what makes it so great. Yeah, just because you just get so much culture there. It's true. You yeah. want to know what he was telling me yesterday when we were in the car? Yeah, me. Yeah, yeah no, you. No. Yeah, when we were in the car driving back, you were saying I because I figured since LA is so diverse, like I figured there'd be like a scene like we have bass scene here, mm-hmm. and then there's like a tech house scene here and whatever, yeah. but it's like it's all tech. Because I was asking him, like, where are you playing? Like, why aren't you playing more out there? He's like, it's all tech house right now. Really? Like, top yeah. to gigs? Yeah, yeah. I mean, But like, bass gigs. Like, for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, like, there's, you know, there's a lot of producers doing a bunch of different stuff. But, like, what, you know, what, like, Space Yacht has been putting on. Or yeah. Like, what a lot of, you know, Br- Brandies and Lemonade, like, starts to kind of, like, switch it up a little bit. Sometimes we'll do a dubstep thing. Yeah. Thing. Sometimes... Some, I think uh, recently they did a DNB thing. Yeah. Um, Which I love. Yeah. Um, but, like, the majority of things happening, what, like, people are really into, like, what's playing at Academy is, like, all, like, tech it's house all tech stuff. House. Yeah. Um, my, my, my buddies Nico and Sway just did a, nice. a, a Bang, show out yeah, in, yeah. At, at the Academy. Um, and it was, it was packed. It was popping. And I yeah. think they're, I think they might be, like, the... On sort of the more aggressive side of yeah, tech house, yeah, for sure. Yeah, one twenty seven yeah. BPM tech yeah. house. Yeah, and yeah. like you know they're they some they're still in like all like you know like kind of like the the pop oriented like remixes. Yeah, um, but they still have like more aggression and you know and um, kids are into it. So I mean you know it it just depends. You know it was a Breathe Carolina show which which oh, like yeah. they're they're on the harder side as well. No, yeah. I mean yeah yeah I played for them actually on my birthday. Crazy's on there. But, uh, <laughs> they're nice they have birthday, but uh, they're they're very nice guys. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's I find it so like frustrating because like everyone says like we were talking about this base house is they're saying like base house is dead, but like DMB is coming back. There's a DMB and show tonight. CLB. This yeah, hosting it, I mean, primary. it's oh, crazy. Yeah. Why why do you think that house and tech house is doing so well right now? I think that what happens in like music trends is you get someone who is. Uh, you know, someone who had a lot of ex- success doing something, yeah. I would say that's Fisher. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and then, then John then you, Summit. And then John Summit. Yep. And then you get a lot of people wanting to kind of ride that wave. Absolutely. And then, because there's so many people doing it, the promoters want to book that. Yeah. And because every, it's just, it's a wave. It's a business part yeah, of the exactly. music industry. And um, you can either ride the wave or or not. And yeah. To your detriment, maybe. Yeah. yeah. I mean, sometimes you have to True. write that. Yeah. yeah. But, like, it's hard for me to just start making Tech House stuff that I'm not necessarily feeling. Yeah. You know? He does but make like, good Tech House. But like, yeah, I've heard it. Like tech house, right? I've, I've yeah, heard yeah, it. Sure, he makes sure. it. But, like, good. last night I dropped a couple um, more, more more techie stuff. Like, yeah, Michelle definitely. Like, Claire. Um, their new one, Power, is fucking yeah. sick. Mm. Yep. Um, and it... It just, but it, it fits in with my set, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. I, yep. I don't just, you know, drop some, 
some unsa 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 like yeah <laughs> just just for like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah put poly out here unsa 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 yeah yeah, yeah. that's good um, I'm gonna sample that yeah exactly. <laughs> uh, but yeah I, I I try to curate it so that it fits in with what I'm doing yeah and I think that's the thing about how it's doing so well it's like. I credit a lot of it to, like, our generation. You know, I got into dance music in 2010, 2011, the Avicii Levels era, mm-hmm. and then came Trap. You know, you think about the Flosh Adonis original Dawn track that really, mm-hmm. like, spearheaded the entire movement, and then Dubstep and Rhythm came. Like, all those things still exist, but house music is like, always kind of gone like this, and I think it's just hit a point on the fucking axis where it's, like, there's commercial pop that's actually truly house music. You know, you look at somebody like MK, Calvin, yeah, yeah. Calvin Harris. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, Calvin Harris is like a thing of his own, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think <clears throat> you have people like us that like still love dance music. But when it comes to the business end of it, these music festivals that are booking a lot of house artists, I can't go to Lost Lands and bang my fucking neck for three days and walk out alive. Like, just take me to the hospital. You totally. Know? <laughs> yeah. But I can go to movement for three days and dance and two-step and enjoy myself. It's a little more social of an experience. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's why house music is doing really well right now. For Tech sure. house. You know? Yeah. Because people like, want to dance. Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, some of the conversations that I've had are, are just kind of based around people want to have fun. Yeah. It's simple. They have been fed up and stuck yep. in a house for however long mm-hmm. they decided to, and now they just want to have fun. Yeah. And I feel like Tech House is the least offensive. It is. <laughs> no, it is. It is. That's so true. It's a basic yeah. like, clap It's the hat. least offensive thing that you can, like, just vibe out to. Yeah. And, like, have fun and, like, not really think about other stuff. Yeah. So, it's a group. And it's it's a, yeah. a genre that can be worked in really well with remixes, mm-hmm. which is such a, has always been a really popular thing, you know, someone mm-hmm. who does a lot of remixes. Yeah. You can drop a house remix, like, let's say I have, like, a true tech house track, right, mm-hmm. and it's instrumental. Uh, everybody here is like, love this track, you know, but 99% of people are like, what the fuck is this? If I put a weekend vocal on top of it, they're like, yeah, this is pretty good, actually, yeah, right? Yeah. And Learn that in the club. And that's, and that's fine with me. I yeah, think yeah. it's been a hot topic lately of this, like, R&B, 90s, you know, remixes and stuff. But, like, I'm thankful for that because the more people that are actually listening to house music and bass music and stuff, like, the better. So, for sure. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I, I support it all. It's just, you know, I don't choose to make things just based off of trends. Yep. Yeah. Um, but I but I support everyone doing it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what you're saying to me is something that comes up basically every single episode, man. Is like longevity. If you want to be an artist and do this the rest of your life, don't trace those trends right now. Yeah. Because <clears throat> it's there's it's a fucking circle of death, honestly. Yeah. yeah. You'll work right now. Exactly. You'll get stuck in it, and then what <clears throat> happens when that fad goes away? You're gonna be chasing the next thing. You live and, alive. And the, and maybe that that next thing is like hip hop, drum and bass. Something mixed with trap or you well, know, you're, whatever, you're, you're whatever you're that thing is. Right now, too. Yeah, yeah, whatever that thing is. Like, you were a tech house artist like yeah. two years ago. Now you're a drum bass artist. <laughs> yeah, right? Well, you're now you're a real fan. fan. Yeah, right? yeah. You might be getting streams because that's what's working. Well, is anybody coming to your shows? I feel like there are people who can do it. You I know, feel there like are people. Justin Bieber does. Like, he finds a trend and makes it work for him. Nitty gritty is Nitty gritty, example, same way, yeah. yeah. Nitty gritty, he's, 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 a, he's a great producer. He kind of, like, a lot of everything he touches is just. Good. Literally yeah. Grammy award winning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's insane. Um, and a lot of people can do that. I mean, even Gasly, like, you know, he'll yeah. come out with like some hard dubstep and then he'll go into like house house stuff. Yeah. Um, it, I guess it really just depends on like what you want to do. Yeah. You know. So true. Yeah. yeah. It's just don't. I, I I just like I would rather fail being one hundred percent myself than sort of succeed doing shit I don't want to do. You want Flip that. <laughs> Is yeah. that? Yeah. You want to know who told me that? It was him. Yeah. He told me the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like it's, it's gonna take longer. I feel like for any artist, but like I feel like people fuck with you being authentically you. Like yeah. once I commit to bass house only, like this year. Yeah. And not like a tech house or whatever. Like there was a shift in terms of like you're even in yourself because you have to mm. really own that. For sure. But then like that's why there's so many bass house people there. Like I'm willing to bet that half people who were there at the US Fun House yesterday. Weren't bass house fans. In fact, I know that. <laughs> they came but to but you. they came and supported me because I'm genuinely me. Yeah, which was yeah, yeah. it's yeah. almost cool. I almost would rather have that than people being like, oh yeah, fuck a bass house. Like, and so it's really yeah. interesting because it's like it does take longer. Like you and I both know that 
this wave of tech house is not suitable to us <laughs> right yeah, now. Right. But yeah. I think like, you know, I feel like music is very cyclical. Like it's like a trend. Mm-hmm. It's like molds Absolutely are back in, bro. Like I have mustache some things, mold as well. You know, like, you, your haircuts are I don't varied. know what it is anymore. <laughs> but but like, you know, I feel like staying true to you, like that's where the longevity comes in. Like, yeah. that's why like I fuck with you. Yeah, fuck, yeah. You know? For sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I I think that's that's the hardest thing as an artist is like you know, you see a bunch of other people getting successful doing things that could you do? Yeah, you could it do it. It sucks. Yeah. But <laughs> do you want to do it? Why would you start doing that? Like, if you did start doing that, are you doing it for yourself or are you doing it for someone else? Yeah. It's the hardest thing as an artist to kind of reconcile, like, am I doing this because I love it? Mm-hmm. Or am I doing this to get famous or to, to like... Be yeah. something I'm not. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, and you know, it, it, you can have moments where you're just not making any money, and it's just like, you what, need the fuck, to do that. what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. Am I a bad businessman? <laughs> Should I just start doing everything that everyone else is doing because yeah. that's what that's what making money. And that's fine. It's, I feel like there. I feel there like there's some type of like a crossroads. There's some type of like through line that you can kind of find cross section. Um, yeah. But you know, you still have to kind of be true to yourself. Yeah, yeah, and that's the toughest part of being an artist. You have to believe in yourself more than anybody else times ten. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Your partner, your parents, your family, your dog, your cat, whoever the fuck, they might say I love you, support you. But mm-hmm. you have to literally take all of that love and energy and put it into your passion. Yeah. And that's why it's so tough if you feel like you put out a song and it doesn't get all the plays that you thought or doesn't get all the likes or whatever the fuck. And that's the biggest thing about social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, wow, like I thought this was the one. Yeah. yeah, and it's usually when you least expect it, like a track will hit a base and stuff. So <laughs> yeah, that's like, it is. how do you even wrap yeah. your head around that concept in the world of creativity? So it's, it's well, and what you real, what you realize is like the songs, like Fisher's losing it, like that's a one off track. It almost shouldn't have worked. Yeah, it shouldn't. It shouldn't <laughs> have. And you find out, like I remember Jaws said this in an interview, like he's like. I didn't think that Feel the Volume was going to be my biggest track. Yeah, exactly. It's like, I thought it was going to flop, and for some reason it hit. You never know what's going to hit. Yeah, like Empty Bed, I... Banger! I you never banger. expected that. I, yeah. I was not expecting it to catch on like it did, in the way that it did. Yeah. To be like this like racing track that people <laughs> listen to, like that get pumped. Like, it's like a sad, somber song if you listen to the lyric. You know, these, these guys are like... Fucking, Going crazy, bro! They're fucking racing bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're fucking yelling like, ah, oh, <laughs> empty bed! It's, like, it's amazing. Ah, oh, empty bed! It's amazing, I love it. But yeah, wow. I, I did not... But that's, yeah. that's you owning you. Yeah. And that's why those moments will happen, I feel like, more often. Yeah, and then yeah. and then you make one like you know like like for instance we talked about gloves earlier. Yeah, I fucking loved gloves. And right. I'm just like yeah, it's fucking is gonna fucking it's a kill. Yeah. It's like yeah, it's done okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, but I fucking love it. So you love yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. But you heard the man. He loves the track. Let's listen to this one together. It's called Gloves by Saint Punk, featuring Matt McAndrew. <laughs> Trending on 1001 Trackless right now? Yeah, it's insane. It's massive. Oh you have an official remix? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Is that's, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's coming out um, on, musical, on Musical Freedom on May 13th. So Congratulations. That should be, yeah, that, that should be pretty dope. It's already getting um, plays like, you know, by all the big Euro guys, Tiesto, Martin Garrix, and uh, Fed the Grand. And, Fuck yeah. You know, which, you know, massive. Nick Romero and shit. Massive. Yeah. Which is like, yeah. I, I don't know, the Euro guys fuck with me. <laughs> I don't know. They fuck, they're the ones still playing the bass. Yeah, they shit. love that hard Julian yeah, Jordan's playing yeah, yeah, that they, shit over there. Yeah, yeah. They fuck with yeah. that shit. Yeah, so I got that one coming out uh, in May. Awesome. Then I got that one on D and D Rex um, in June. Um, Gas Street. And uh, yeah, man. I mean, other than that, like, yeah, I I got a bunch of tracks going on. But oh yeah, so I got my assistant over here. Got a got a show in Oregon um, coming up in Portland okay. uh, in June. June, uh, June. grunge capital, baby. Yeah, Let's man. go. Hey. Yeah, yeah, fuck yeah. I'm gonna play some grunge music. And I'm, gonna go yeah. sip, I'm gonna go sip some wine. Yeah, next day. <laughs> he's gonna sip some wine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. fucking was it chainsaw down some trees down there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah, you are. Lumberjack and bass house. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Grunge house God, built with lumberjacks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fuck. Yeah, so that should be a good one. It's this. Uh, it's this new venue, and I and I forget it, off the top of my head what it's called right now. Um, but they're changing formats a little bit. They're starting to like book DJs and stuff. Fuck yeah. It's like a, a regular like club where they do live inter- like live live music. Yeah. So they're trying to do DJs, and I guess they just had one that was pretty successful. So. Fuck yeah. You're the next words. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, a lot to look forward yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, totally. Year. But um, yeah, man, getting a lot of uh, getting a lot of music ready to put out. Um, some more singles on on my label, Graffiti Records. Yeah. Um, that's under Armada, right? Uh, we had it under Armada while I was releasing with Armada. Okay. Kind of it's kind of as like now. a yeah yeah. Um, Graffiti is amazing, man. Yeah, thanks, man. Uh, so now we. I I have we did my girl on graffiti mm-hmm. and then I'll have two more um, so yeah so more music this year man just as much as Bangers. possible yeah 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 it's gonna be good we I'm excited on there I'm excited yeah we'll yeah. do some graffiti shit yeah send me some demos too <laughs> <laughs> wow you sound like him bro <laughs> I'll send you some shit I know that people want to know when Coca Cobra same punk and you know happy because we're the only black and white people uh, yeah. on social media. <laughs> though, though I am dabbling out, outside the black and white just a little bit. Yeah, you have just a little bit of color. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This one's got a pink shirt on right now. I feel like I love the black and white vibe and that's kind of how I started the whole project because I was just like, well, you mentioned the shirt. I, I wanted to have like a, a, a focus and that was like, you know, kind of one of the easiest reads is yeah. like, oh, it's black and white. I, right. I get it. Right. Um, but now I feel like there is something kind of limiting of the of the black and white as as beautiful as it is like there there's there's some kind of energy that can be told through through color as well yeah like lights at a club yeah like you don't see that yeah exactly yeah so i'm starting to dabble but still in the grungy way yeah Yeah. a lot of grain gotta keep those (laughs) your brand needs insane absolutely bro i mean you're grunge deep down (laughs) (laughs) all the way to the this guy needs a shower bro that's how grungy he is i'm filthy <laughs> Bro, I, I gotta tell everybody when I, cause I didn't know when you arrived, you got in, like I was supposed to let you in, and I said to Tony, I'm like, Where, where's Trevor? Yeah. And I like look around, I'm like, That is definitely <laughs> him! <laughs> I'm like, That is though. literally, like, there's not, like, a, literally, if I didn't even know what you look like, I'm like, Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back! Oh my god. Yeah. So, well. I, and then when you, I'm telling you, bro, when you got on, I was just like, You look sick. Sick. <laughs> Bro, well, you fucking crush it. Thanks, like, man. man. It's real. It's such a pleasure oh, to have you come to Chicago. Yeah, and, um, yeah, man. We're so proud of Flynn. And, yeah. Um, it just means a lot for you to believe in this vision with yeah. us. And I mean, I'm telling you, like, I know he's probably gassing you up, but he's been gassing you up for years. I mean, you yeah. are, in, in my eyes, like, one of the main reasons that he's decided to just say, I'm going to fucking do this. The whole rebrand. Literally. Yeah, the whole rebrand. That was man. it. I saw you do it, and I was like, Fuck, like yeah, you're I can, inspiring others, man. Yeah, and you're inspiring Flynn. So I like, mean, that's that's really all I can ask. So for. thank yeah. you. Yeah. That shit, that shit course, changed man. my life, and like I feel more free than I I ever have. And yeah, than I've ever been. Well, I love that. I mean, I love to hear that. I mean, like yeah, like I said, if there's you know, if I can inspire just one person, then I'm that one. I baby. did my job. I did my job. Yeah. Look at these I guys. mean, all we do is like making music, is we want to 
make someone feel something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's it. Let's go hands in the middle. <laughs> go team. Let's get everyone oh, yeah, in the shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come yeah. on, come yeah. on, come yeah. on, come on. Yeah, come here. Grunch, come on, bro. Come on, come on. Come on Mr. Grunch house on Mr. three. Mr. Black and White. Where am I going? Yeah, I'll go this way. This yeah, way. yeah, I'll go away yeah. from the camera. Okay. Grunch house on I'll three. Look at the camera. All right. One, two, three. Grunch, Grunch house! house. <laughs>